I know I have a tool under, under the Prosecution Act that I can use. I do not believe it is appropriate to use it in this case. Okay. All right. I mean, then that's, that's clear. Um, well, I, I mean, he's, he's in a very firm mood about this. So, um, Does he understand the gravity of what this potentially could mean? This is not just about saving jobs. This is about interfering with one of our fundamental institutions. So that is just one part of that explosive conversation between the former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould and the Clerk of the Privy Council Michael Warnick that she secretly recorded back in December, a month before she was shuffled, in which she explicitly says she believes the Prime Minister and his team were exerting inappropriate political interference on the SNC-Lavalin affair. She believes she was threatened uh, with her job by Wernick when Wernick said that the Prime Minister was going to get this done one way or another. The Prime Minister, of course, has denied there was ever inappropriate pressure and has denied knowing that Wilson Raybould had made up her mind on the issue. Does this tape suggest otherwise? How damaging is it to the Prime Minister? What happens now? Um, to find out all about that, the scrum is here. What a day for it. Tana McCharles, senior reporter with the Toronto Star, is here. Joyce Napier, CTV's Ottawa Bureau Chief, is here. Craig Oliver, CTV's Chief Political Commentator. In all his years, he's never seen anything like this. And our special guest today is Green Party leader Elizabeth May. Um, all right, uh, the documents and the tapes are, uh, the recorded conversation is extraordinary. Uh, just your reaction, Elizabeth May, what does this all tell you? It's fascinating that when Michael Warnick, our former clerk of Privy Council, testified before the Justice Committee and we pressed him on the, the details of the phone conversation that Jody Wilson-Raybould related, he couldn't remember any of it because he said, I wasn't wearing a wire. Well, Jody Wilson-Raybould was. And we have a full transcript that substantiates veiled threats. The real question is, did the Prime Minister ask Michael Warnick to make this call? Did his former clerk of Privy Council, Kevin Lynch, ask him to make this call? On whose behalf? was Wernick threatening Jody wilson -Raybould. Well, don't forget, it came. that phone call came right after Wernick had lunch with the Prime Minister that day. So it's, it's pretty clear with the message he was delivering. He had a message to deliver to her, get this done, he wants it done. And she makes clear in that call, contrary to what she said before, that there was political interference, yes. that's not why just this, an attempt. That's why this really was no, a smoking cell phone in, the, in terms of the Prime Minister can never quite have the reputation again he had before all of these events she made it clear this was political interference with a criminal prosecution what else would the government be doing would they do that again do they do that often behind the scenes we're left to wonder Joyce. Well, and, and and what's interesting is the Prime Minister said time and time again if she did feel any pressure or that she mm -hmm. if she felt there was any political interference she should have come to me well in this conversation which she knows she's taping, so she's very well rehearsed. She's almost like a, a surgeon, right? She knows exactly what to say, but she repeated several times, I feel this is political interference. She said it several mm -hmm. times. So if the prime minister says he didn't know and she should have told him, well, he did know. And Elizabeth May, the conversation begins, just to answer your first question, Wernick says, I wanted to pass on where the prime minister is at clearly inferring mm -hmm. I am speaking on behalf of the Prime Minister. So that's how it starts. Uh, what else struck you yeah. about all this, Elizabeth May? Well, I mean, we, we have Warnick putting this inappropriate pressure. And when Jody Wilson-Raybould says there wasn't political interference because there were attempts, she rebuffed the attempts at political interference. It's clear to me from all of this that neither the clerk of Privy Council, our former clerk, uh, Michael Warnick, nor the Prime Minister, nor the people in his office who are supposed to know the law, Elder Marquez and Matthew Bouchard, none of them seem to understand the concept of prosecutorial independence, which is a constitutional principle. Jody Wilson-Raybould, I think, comes through very clearly in saying, I want to protect the Prime Minister. I'm telling you this clearly. This is a warning. You mustn't press it, far it, it is also pretty clear, if you tie all the dots together of three things Wernick said, the last one being, remember, you're not just the Attorney General. You were also a member of the government and a member of the Cabinet. 
it's pretty clear that they're ready to move her, that that's the threat. You know, it would be bad if yep. it was a collision. Uh, we, we don't want to see this happen. I'm worried about the prime minister and how determined he is. She got the message. The Saturday night massacre was coming. And there were other revelations in there too, like, uh, and contradictions of testimony we'd heard. We were told by Wernick and others that this was never discussed at cabinet. She makes very clear that in fact she told cabinet when they were enacting the law that when you do, guess what? There's no guarantee this has to be an exceptional use. It has to go to the prosecutor, only the prosecutor's decision, and SNC may never see a DPA. Right. She says that was discussed at cabinet, that she raised it and she flagged those concerns. Joyce, the, 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 the prime minister is not inoculated, just to do what Elizabeth May said, and just what strikes you, Wernick, I think he's going to find a way to get this done one way or another. He's in that kind of mood. So the prime now Wernick's saying describing the mood of the prime minister and what he's and then and later she says I know that he always gets things done. She, they're directly pulling the prime minister into this dialogue. Absolutely, but you know, it's kind of normal that the prime minister gets things done. It would be <laughs> abnormal if he didn't, right? And he is the boss of the cabinet as well. So it, it, it isn't, that part I didn't find unusual. What I did find unusual uh, and, and extraordinary is that this speaks to a, such a frayed relationship and, you know, a loss of trust. They yeah. are at loggerheads, and he says it himself. And I don't she, know what to do with a prime minister and an attorney general who are at loggerheads. So at one point, you really feel that he doesn't even know what to say anymore. He's trying, he's l looking for his words, and he, he's, he's trying she, to make this right, and he can't. And, um, she and, when, not, she, and when she gets off the phone, she knows where this is going. Absolutely, she texts, yeah. yes. Yeah. She texts her chief of staff, and she says, the shite's going to hit the fan. That's right. That's, right. The, that's the core she, 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 she includes and that in her package to the Justice yes. Committee. She knew she was in trouble. She did not trust them, and yes. she had good reason yeah. to do the tape. Had she not done it, his, her critics could have said it never happened. Because remember what Wernick said yeah. at the first time he was before the committee? He said, I don't remember that conversation. How could he possibly she, have forgotten that conversation? She, this guy yeah. has politicized that high job in the public service for all time. She also puts the boots to any notion that this was about experiencing things differently or an, or yeah, an erosion yeah. of trust. She directly addresses that head on and hammers the point that it's about prosecutorial independence. Okay, so what happens now, Elizabeth May? Can they call her back to Justice Committee? How do they get all this evidence of this recording and still say, you know what, we don't need to call her back to the Justice Committee to test all this evidence? Well, I mean, I think they made a huge mistake in deciding to shut down her ability to finish her testimony and also to know what happened between the moment that she was made Minister of Veterans Affairs and when she decided to step down. To me, what's appalling and screams loudly from this evidence is that we do not have good legal advice to the clerk of Privy Council, the Prime Minister, or the people closest to him. And they should be looking very closely right now at who decided to tell them. And really, they're not lawyers. Justin Trudeau's not a lawyer. Jerry Butt's not a lawyer. Michael Warnick says in his conversation with the Attorney General, I'm not a lawyer, but surely there's a way to get around this prosecutorial independence thing. Good grief. They should have been, they should have been listening to their Attorney General and getting good legal advice because this is a very serious abuse of their office by pushing for getting a deal for SNC-Lavalin instead of, by the way, they can give them a DPA between the verdict and the sentencing. They can do that, but this must go to open trial. Uh, Joyce, uh, what happens now? The caucus will meet on Wednesday. Do they got to boot her out? Well, you know, they, 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 yes, I think they will. I think a few of them are going to get up, and we know that, in caucus and ask that she be booted out. The question is, will the prime minister stay in the room when they're voting? Will they take a vote? How will they do this? Right. But they will have to talk about that. We've been asking the prime minister every time, every opportunity. After she's taping, Wernick, what how? You, there can't be any right, trust exactly, there, Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. If, if, if she starts taking notes during, during the caucus, they're going to wonder, why is she taking notes? Is she going to use this? against yeah, sure. me. I mean, it's finished. Well, they used to say, beware the Ides of March, but I think Tonda quoted the December 19th, 557 text message is now the warning in Canada. Okay, the shite is going to hit the fan, and it has. <laughs> that is the quote of the year. All right, Elizabeth May, thank you so much for joining us. We'll find out what hits the fan next week when the House returns.